Welcome to the PDX Progressive Talk Radio Video Series. Join us for engaging conversation on local issues and progressive politics delivered in thought-provoking dialogue. We're here to empower voices and inspire change. You can be part of the conversation across our social channels. Catch us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. Now let's get this party started. It's starting live every now and then. It... Okay, it looks like we're live. Hello, Ray. Hello, Woo! hello, progressive PDX progressive community. My name is Sherry. Uh, Moses is the host on the radio show. I do the social media. And today you'll have to excuse my lighting because my ring light is not where it's supposed to be. So we're going to do it this way. And that's not the point anyway. I am here today with Ray Gordon. She is a candidate for Clackamas County Commissioner seat number Number four, this girl wants to take on Mark Scholl, and I am thrilled to have her here on the show today. Uh, Ray is going to give us a little information about who she is and what she does, and we'll head on into the interview after that. It's all yours, Ray. All right. So I'm Ray Gordon, and I live in Oregon City, uh, but I've been in Clackamas County since 1995, and actually, I uprooted my whole life in uh, LA because I fell in love with Clackamas County. And I I had never been homesick for a place before. And when I came and visited and I went back home, I was like, yeah, I left my heart in Clackamas County. So I have been here since then. Um, when I was a, a child in fifth grade, I was in Tacoma. So I really knew how wonderful the Northwest was and it was like coming home. And I'm pretty excited about, you know, stepping up and and uh, really doing something great for this place that I, I call home and got my heart. And and I am so happy to have you here. And as as our audience gets to know you better, I'm sure they will adore you. Oh, thank you. Oh. Very much so. <laughs> so you introduced yourself and I um wanted to learn more about what you do in your regular life and and how you want to bring Clackamas County government into that area. Yeah, you know, um, so I worked for Clackamas County from 2005 to 2016. Uh, I was really blessed to be a part of the tourism department, which was perfect for somebody like me who uprooted my life to to move to this place I fell in love with, to actually then just, you know, be able to promote it and share it with other people that were visiting. And um, I decided in 2016 that I wanted to take a break. Um, from working for the government and pursue a uh, pursue a full time full time music and so uh, what I did is I left to be a full time musician and also part time uh, marketing consultant so I had an amazing time um, following my passion really growing in that field and um, like I always tell people I love putting the community in music community and also by being self-employed I was able to do a lot of volunteering and and doing some community leading and I've been involved uh, you know as a president of the Oregon City Lions Club and just really helping to make a difference and then um, COVID hit and um, I lost all all my my gigs and and my clients uh, for marketing and I was I was blessed to get a, a short short term contract job with uh, the county back back with the county and and it was amazing to be back and and it kind of filled me with you know another uh, you know feeling like I'm home and um, that was amazing I was I was helping with COVID relief and disaster management. And so that ended, and now I am with Pamplin with Pamplin Media, and uh, uh, and a, and another, you know, place where, you know, it's it's very community driven. So it's nice to be in in a place right now um, while I get ready for this campaign uh, that is very community related. It is so that's very much. Yeah. yeah. So I so I always tell people I I I have this. In, 
this really vast experience where I've worked for pr private sector, I've worked for public sector, I've been self-employed, and I've been underemployed and non-employed. So I definitely <laughs> could see the bigger picture picture everywhere. You're very, very uh, uh, diverse in in your vision and, and right. how you can view the problems that are in Clackamas County. And we're going to get to a couple of the things mm -hmm. I want to know about. Uh, what misconceptions do people have about you and how would you address that? You know, um, an, uh, well, personally, a misconception is uh, when you're when you're a musician and, and really focusing on being a musician, you you work really hard on people liking you because if they like you, then they'll come to your gigs and you'll get more gigs. But um, yeah, this is my dog. <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's, he's a little <laughs> bored. Um, so the misconception is um, that a lot of people that are close to me, they're they're worried that that it's going to be too hard for somebody that spends a lot of time, you know, getting people to to like them to to buy their music and but you know the the um flip side of it is there's so much more that i could do be, because i have that experience because i'm you know as a musician i've been really audience focused and it's all about what does the audience want and and i think that does transfer well and with my experience with with being a private sector public sector and also being a community leader where I help mediate things and and so that's the misconception is they see me on stage and they're not aware of all the stuff that I've done off the stage right right and but that that my heart is that I'm willing to let go of some of that because of of what I could do because of all that experience yeah so that'll lead into the next question. So you wish to serve the people of Clackamas County. Why? And in what capacity do you believe that that you could benefit the people of Clackamas County? Okay, you know, um, one thing that I did uh, that I was the most fulfilled with when I was at the county for those 10 years was um, besides, besides helping really to promote the area and show everybody else uh, what what great things there's to see to do here and also help build up the economy which is huge is, huge. is i was <clears throat> i was chair of the employee activities team so what that is it was something that john mante as county commissioner or county administrator years ago established and gave away to the employees to to really be a grassroots thing and so it's an activities group that was prior oh was prior to um to the DEI department and and so he can see, we can see him if you want hey Dave Dave hi baby Dave look at that <laughs> do you see all the people in in Facebook land what do you want um so <laughs> so um one thing one thing was um that uh we we worked really hard to uh build morale with the with the employees and one thing that i was incredibly honored and blessed to do was to have the voice of all these different department representatives let me get a treat yeah. um <laughs> it's okay yeah it's live video it's, it's live video it. and it's at home and you know i wouldn't Woo! i wouldn't i wouldn't eat this myself but you know i guess it's really good um <laughs> sit dave sit his name is Dave. That's his funny. name is Dave. So um, one thing I really liked about being a part of the A team, and that's what they call it, the A team, you know, except without Mr. T, although he would have been an awesome, an awesome addition to our group, um, is that all these department representatives, we'd meet once a month and we would see what we could do to help um, build the morale, make Clackamas County a better place to to um, work. And one thing that I noticed as we were working really hard to to do inclusive type um, activities and networking opportunities, like we we wanted to make sure that we were you know aware of different uh, different backgrounds and different 
physical limitations, like we weren't always going to do walks, you know, because some people couldn't do walks. And then we did, you know, things that were really really purposed with bringing people together and making people feel included. And that was prior to the DEI department. Um, so in a, in a, in a sense, I always say that we kind of had a DEI department, but it was a volunteer group. But the one thing that happened that I didn't realize there was two things that happened that were amazing. And one was when we all met, we learned about all the other departments. There was things that some of us mm -hmm. didn't realize the other departments yeah. did, did. And I'm like, yeah. we have a, a, a passenger vehicle that we do to take people to appointments. I'm like, I didn't know that. So even though I was in the tourism department, once in a while, I would get a question that I could answer because I knew because of that. And that's such an important thing is, is knowledge is power. And it always is the bottom line that I think to good customer service is the more you know, the more you show your good customer service. And then another thing was um, uh, just the ability to really to, to to be a shoulder and to hear the the problems that people were having. So we were able, you know, I was I was able to hear like similar stuff that was happening. So now going back to your question about you know why why I'm interested in stuff. So when I got when I went back. Um, whoops, sorry, you guys, when I went back to, um, um, I went back to, uh, the disaster management, um, I, I found out there was still some things still happening and I, I felt like I had increased myself. I had, I went out, you know, I went out from the mothership and, um, I saw other galaxies and I came back and, and what happened as I'm they're in the facilities department in the warehouse and i hear and there's a guy coming walks by and he goes i can't wait just counting the days and i'm like counting the days till what and he goes retirement and mm -hmm. and he was so like i'm just done right and i was just like i remember in 2005 that first five years of working for the county how people would stay longer than their then their retire when their retirement was coming and they would um they would they would say i'm going to stay on a little bit longer and somehow between those first five years like the first five years was like a dream job last five years of my of my working there i was very unfulfilled so the thing is there was a switch that happened and it's still happening and you know i i believe that somebody that was a prior employee could do so much for the commission and because it needs to be fixed from the inside out, not the outside in. And there's so many, you know, I'm, I'm knowing about some possible candidates and they're incredible and they got some great, great history and they got some great resume and background, but they're not a former employee that was charged as a chair to to build morale and connections and improve customer service, which is always the, the um the result of of connecting people together it's like there was a time when people were so proud to serve the citizens and there's still don't get me wrong there's still some amazing superstars but i recently went to a yard sale and bumped into somebody who was a superstar in one of the departments that i knew when i was there <clears throat> she had been there for years she left to go to another to to a city job because she was incredibly unfulfilled and unhappy. And that should not happen. There's something going on. And there's also another another person that I just found out who has incredible in, in, institutional knowledge and is amazing superstar. He left for another um, government entity. And it's like, that is not serving the citizens well to lose those people. Right. And so that's that's one reason why I am so excited to do what I can. And then also I wanted to say that why I was self-employed for those five years, you know, singing all over the States. Um, I, I took what little time I had to develop a, a program for government employers called team, which is stands for the employment employment activities manager. And it's a way of approaching that based on 
the group that I was a part of. And I actually had meetings with Gary Schmidt, the uh, county administrator. He ended up not uh, hiring me as a consultant to start it because they were already doing a lot of it. But he did use some of my program elements to integrate in their DEI. Wow. And um, and I've, I've been getting a little bit of, you know, feedback of what worked and what didn't work. So um, I'm glad that they they were able to utilize some of that program because it's it's really basic. It's like you you got to put the you got to develop and and improve the connections between employees and managers, employees to employees, and employees to citizens. Right. And so the, the, that reason and a whole much a whole bunch I'm excited about coming back in that kind of situation. So what changes? In fact, you're you're. You just answered, I think, the next question, which was, what changes would you like to see in Clackamas County government? I, you know, I would like you to elaborate on that a little bit. You know, um, one thing, w when I was back in the disaster management and the working out down in the warehouse, um, I really enjoyed getting to know the facilities people a little bit more. Because when I worked for those 10 years, it was more about like, hey, we got a light bulb out, you know, and, and um, when they when I got to know him a little bit more, um, I realized that there's a couple of things. One, they were such a strong bonded group, kind of like the sheriffs are. And I think it has to do with that. They have to look out for each other because there's possible, they, they can get hurt on the job. I mean, right. facilities and, and I would like to see a little bit more of that, that, you know, that cohesiveness in other departments, um, even e even though paper cuts is what might hurt you <laughs> rather than a shot or, you know. Um, but one thing I did ask, I asked them, I said, hey, do, do any of the the um, commissioners come and kind of like shadow you or just kind of like get to know what you do? And they're like, nah, they never come here. I'm like, and I, and I, I know that they probably do and maybe they didn't see it, but uh, there's something that Ben West did recently that I thought was wonderful. And he did a ride along. And I think there needs to be more of that. Yeah. And and I really admire that because how how can you help your departments if you don't know what boots on the ground looks like? And, you know, there's there's that fine line of people like, you know, it might be uncomfortable having a commissioner kind of overshadow you or I mean, or shadow you. But I think it's really important that the, the commissioners really know um, every department and what they do. And uh, one thing about that team program that I developed and that I, I worked on was that um, when a commissioner goes into a commissioner or, uh, you know, executive management team member in, in a city or a county, they go to meet somebody else in a, in a department, it, it asks you to go there five minutes early so you can engage anybody that's there. Because in the first five years that I worked for the county, um, we had Larry Soa, we had Bill Kenimer, and we had um, uh, Martha Schrader. And so anytime they would come into the office, into the tourism office, I I always remember them saying hi to everybody. And that built morale. It really makes a difference. You know, like, hey, what are you guys up to? And 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 then it became a certain point where a commissioner would come in, go straight to the the um, director's office and then leave. And And it was like, and wow. and they don't realize what a big difference that makes in the morale of their employees. Right. And so that's why I think um, somebody that hasn't been in that situation and saw that change um, from, you know, from around the early 2000s to the late 2000s, there, there was a shift. And that's also when it went to five commissioners. And interestingly enough, you would think that with five commissioners, there would be more ability to do that, but it actually changed, which was was very interesting. And I think um, I think that could be fixed. It could be really fixed. Well, in person, from my personal perspective, it doesn't necessarily matter the number of commissioners. It's the thought process and the commissioners that fill those numbers. Yeah, right? a number is really just a count. It's it's the psychology behind the people that are the number but anyway, right. that's something we yeah, can talk yeah. about later and you know it's it's i mean i i tell some people this this you know some of my ideas and stuff and they're like well 
you you're still working for the citizens and and i understand that that it may see that that i'm internally focused but it it all blends together it's it's the hill on the mountain range it's not just a hill that i'm willing to die on it's the hill attached to the mountain range and the mountain range is customer service and it really does make a difference is that we all as as a county and as a county employee i found it really important that i know what other departments were doing so that i knew how um you know how i i was relative to that and it only makes it better for the citizens that the inside is fixed well it does because that also leads into listening to right. your constitu- constituents, listening yeah. to what the people in the county want and not just often going and doing whatever you think the people want because you don't know if you don't ask. And if you're not interested in asking and you still just go off like what Mark is doing, mm-hmm. then you're going to well, you get know, primaried and you're going to get voted out. And you know, it that, that uh, leads to something that I, you know, when I, started thinking about doing this i mean i've always stepped up i've been neighbor i've been a chair of neighborhoods i've been on multiple oregon city committees and um and i couldn't stop getting this this thought out of my mind especially after um they were gonna buy a hotel um for the for the homeless situation it was people before policies and the i i so and to explain what I mean by that is that by the time the citizens knew more about their potential to buy, they were already in the the negotiation process and that was too late. And the thing is that's their policy and then they're putting it to the people. So I know personally that if you let people in on the brainstorming beginning process, you'll have to wade through a lot more, but, I would rather have that than the citizens find out when it's already in the negotiating contract space. And I get it. I get why some people are not told until it's a more of a possibility, but that's too late because that does not value input from the citizens. You have to go a little bit longer. It might take a little bit longer, but in the long run, it values, it values your citizens more when they have more of a say early on. And that's why I say people before policies. Policies are great. Good policies are great. But don't write policies and then try to put them on the people instead of for the people. And that's that's a big that's why I'm like people before policies is is really, really the the flag I'm waving. And I and I really appreciate that. And I did not appreciate I think I think where everybody got so upset with the hotel thing was they just took it off the table. Right. Yeah. For no and I, reason. For no reason. They made up their reasons for taking it off the table because it's wrong. And and it should have been, hey, I, anyway, this is your interview. But oh, no, no. I talk, <laughs> this is this is all stuff I need to talk about. Yeah, well, they I don't I'm not a a 2D Smith fan whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I am actively working to have her voted out. And but, I, I pre- yeah, I appreciate your, you know, your view and stuff like that. I'm I'm kind of in the middle. I'm, you know, I, I work with her in the, the tourism department with her, uh, with her bread and breakfast or bread and breakfast. Although, wait a minute, that would be kind of a cool thing. That would be, <laughs> you know, you get, to, you get to sleep at Dave's killer bread in yeah. the morning. And, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's my marketing brain. I can't, I can't yeah. stop. Um, so, you know, I could see, I see a lot of plus and, and I see minuses and everybody, even, even Mark Scholl, but, um, but I do, do feel like it's time for him to to not be on the commission well you may believe that she's a nice person or whatever i personally do not know her nor would i actively pursue to know her but her actions speak louder than any words she could speak to me i hear you yeah and 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 that's what i judge i make my judgments on no you know it's 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 true it's like um intent and actions they go hand in hand you know, so, and, and sometimes it, it's hard with, you know, if an intent is different than actions, then that has to be fixed. Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. So the last question here for you is, 
Do you have any reservations about the way Clackamas County is currently dealing with crime, homelessness, and drugs? And if so, what are things that you might do to, what are policies you might put into place that would uh, rectify the wrongs that you're seeing? Yeah, well, you know, um, I know the big the big thing is measure 110. And mm -hmm. I do appreciate that the, the county uh, commission, the county board is is working on on rectifying that. Um, and I think it's okay to try things and think they're going to work and to admit, you know, it's, it's good to try things and to admit it didn't work and fix it. And um, until some things you just don't know, you know, it's like, it's like baking, you know, sometimes you don't know it doesn't work with those ingredients until it's, it's distasteful. Right. Or plan better. Right. Right. And it's, yeah. And, you know, coming from a marketing background too, um, especially with tourism, with, with marketing and tourism, you, you have to see from all different angles and you have to look ahead. Like you're not only going to market this campaign, but, but can you, can you, um, you know, s sustain people that are coming? So, so, that's what's great about marketing and having a marketing background is you're always thinking, always thinking, always thinking of every different thing. Like we don't, we don't just market to one type of person. We right. mark to everybody. And it's like one thing, uh, it, and I'm going off a little tangent, but one thing I want to say is one time um, somebody that was really into Trump because they like his policies um said something like well if people don't understand what he's saying that's on them and i'm like no it's on him because coming from marketing we're not just going to market to people that understand or or get one type of thinking we market to everybody because then nobody's going to come to the county if we're marketing just to like people that get what it feels like to sit in a river you know or something like that and that made that that was another seed that was planted about running. It's like, you don't, you, you don't just talk to people that voted for you. You talk to people no, yeah. that you, that you, that you serve. It doesn't matter if somebody didn't vote for me, I'm going to serve them because that I work for them. And um, so I think something, so in, in like regular big, you know, um, national, politics that's that's been lost and it's like i'm not gonna you know they speak to just people who voted for him that's not the way it's supposed to work that's not the way marketing works if if we did that in tourism when i was tourism nobody would know about clackamas county really right, right. um but to go back what you're <laughs> what you were saying um you know back to the to the homeless and the and the crime and stuff one thing about about homeless that um you know i could say is that you know, I moved a lot growing up and there was a couple of times where we, you know, stayed on people's couches um, mm -hmm. or that we were staying in somebody's house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and when you think about it, that, that is partial, you know, that's kind of like um, when I did the homeless count with the, the city, I went out and um, we were told to include people that were mm -hmm. couch surfing. And I was like, I did that too. Right. Right. And it's like, I would never have thought that that would be considered homeless, you know, and standing in a pantry line and stuff. So there's two things about the homeless that I wanted to say. One is whether people like it or not, they are neighbors. Mm -hmm. And, and if we start looking at them like neighbors and treating them like neighbors, how do you think that their attitude and their ability to take care of their, their situation and where they are staying you know, what, if they felt like a neighbor, would there be a better, a cleaner situation? Would there be less trash? Um, also, uh, I've noticed too that, you know, they're the, with the homeless, they're talking about helping with mental health and with, um, with drugs. And I know this third thing is happening, but it's not being promoted. And it's trying to work out connecting people back with their families. And if that's happening, it needs to be talked about more because a lot of things, I really believe that um, you can inspire people by your actions. So if you are talking about, I got this person who's homeless to talk to their long lost mother 
and they're talking to each other. They're trying to help each other out, trying to build those connections. I know that it's happening, like, but it's not being talked about and it's not being promoted. The more you talk about it, the more you you tell people the stories of you connected somebody back with their family. Um, they got counseling together. Yes, yeah. Right. The, the people are going to go, you know what? I haven't seen Uncle Jeff in like a couple of years. And somebody said he might be homeless. I wonder if I could talk to the county and see if they have him on their radar. I want to see what I could do to help. So right. I know it's not as simple as that, but the thing is you got to talk about what you're doing. And, and I don't know why people aren't. And, and, you know, they might, it, it's just, I think that's a game changer and crime is, is fixing the measure 110 and and de definitely really pushing more mental health i do know that the county per just recently purchased the pamplin building funny enough oh wow um which which is uh you know i'm working for pamplin right now okay. and um and i just thought it was funny because i'm like hey hopefully i'll be going back to visit as a commissioner my old yeah. office yeah and and i think the mental the more the more the stigma off of mental illness is taken off the better. Um, I do have a personal a personal story to say is that um, I had a mental illness in, in the family and I was trying to deal with it, was trying to come to terms with it um, and learn tools. And I, and I did take a family to family class uh, with the National Alliance of Mental Illness. And the one thing that still sticks out to me from, from NAMI is the idea that your brain is like a heart. So if somebody has heart disease or they have a heart attack, people rally and they're like, you know, they work really hard and the brain is an organ too. Yep. So if something's a little, a, a little off putting about it, um, that we take the stigma and just concentrate on it. Like it's an organ, you know, uh, people, yep. people are afraid of things they don't understand. So the more, the more they know, and I, I, I implore anybody to go and, and check out NAMI and, and learn because we all know somebody, you know, I, I've struggled with anxiety and, and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm willing to admit that I'm on, on a medication for it. And I'm willing to tell people that I've gone to counseling. And the thing is the more and more that you're open about your own situation, but that you're working on it, the more people, again, by, um, by example, um, we'll also do the same. Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of in a nutshell, right? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo I definitely so, don't like to talk. What? Okay. So, um, as we're running up past 30 minutes now. Uh, okay. I wanted to give you one last opportunity to make an argument for pre, pre officially announcing um, so I can have this. I'd like to have like a sound piece. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Just so go for it. How, how, what, why should we Clackamas County residents vote for Ray Gordon for County Commissioner seat four to unseat Mark Scholl? But beyond that. Yeah. So I'm Ray Gordon and I am running. I will be running for Clackamas County Commission number four because I want to work for the people, not on the people. And I believe that people should become come before policies and that we can really, really make Clackamas County an amazing place for generations to come long after we are all gone. I think you're fabulous, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'm excited and, and uh, I, I wanna be your uh, commish singer. So uh, there you go. Commish singer. <laughs> thank I'm you gonna, so much thank you for having an interview with me uh, hang tight sure oh on pdx progressive talk radio thank, thank you so much we appreciate it.